We're just over halfway through the series and already you should have picked up some pretty useful skills. You now know how to enter a mindful state at any time you know, so you can better appreciate your surroundings or at least just escape the stress for a few moments of respite. But let's rewind and look at that stress in a little more detail. What is it about stress that makes it so serious? Why are we trying to combat stress? And is stress always bad? Actually, stress is something that is sorely misunderstood by a lot of people. Stress is not really one thing, rather it's a spectrum of responses that occur in response to dangerous situations. Essentially, when you detect danger, your body's response is to release hormones and neurotransmitters that trigger the fight or flight response. This is the response that we described earlier and it's modulated by the following hormones stroke neurotransmitters and neurotransmitters are like hormones but they affect the brain more directly and they don't last as long. And they are dopamine, epinephrine, norepinephrine, serotonin, cortisol, glutamate, testosterone and estrogen. Together these cause a number of symptoms that you should be familiar with if you've ever gotten into an argument, fight or a dangerous predicament. And if you haven't, oh, who are you? Now these symptoms include a sense of dread, racing thoughts, shaking, muscle contraction, vasodilation, which is a widening of the veins, increased heart rate, pupil dilation, resistance to pain, suppression of the immune system and digestive system so that more blood and resources can be sent to the brain and muscles, increased sensitivity to sounds and light, tunnel vision, rapid breathing, sweating and increased blood viscosity to encourage the blood to clot in case of an injury. In short, our body goes into a high performance mode by diverting energy and supplies away from maintenance tasks and less immediately urgent processes. Our strength, speed and ability to fight or climb increase and this makes us more powerful and better able to respond. This response evolved in the wild in order to help us protect ourselves in case of danger. If we saw a predator or we saw a forest fire, then these changes would help us escape. Likewise, we would become better fighters when competing with members of our own species for resources. And sometimes in the modern world, this response can be exactly what we need. If a mugger pulls a knife on you, then this will give you the best chance of running away to live another day. But the problem comes when the threat isn't a physical threat and when it isn't an immediate threat. We simply live in a world that we didn't evolve for and this means many of our systems are essentially outdated. For example, if you're giving a speech, then your body will react in just the same way as it would if you saw a forest fire. And in this case, none of the changes would help at all. You'd be more likely to stutter, you'd look sweaty and your voice might even change. And if you panic, and sometimes stress can feel like a heart problem, then this can eventually create a vicious circle causing you to get more and more stressed, eventually hyperventilating and passing out as a result. And this is what happens in the case of an anxiety attack. Moreover, this is also how we respond to being in debt or hating our jobs, or waiting to hear back about an offer we put in on a house. But we can't run away from these problems and we can't fight them. And this means that the fight or flight response can continue on a low level for a long duration of time. And this is what we call chronic stress and it's bad for all kinds of reasons. For starters, chronic stress means that our immune system and digestion are suppressed for long periods of time. This can lead to malabsorption as we become less able to get extra nutrients from our food and it can prevent us from sleeping and it can make us more immune to disease. What's more is that eventually this stress can cause us to run out of the catecholamine neurotransmitters that allow us to focus. 
This is called adrenal fatigue and it's linked with depression and chronic anxiety. Note as well that no neurotransmitter and no hormones work in a vacuum. If you increase one, you alter others. And when you increase cortisol, associated with chronic stress in particular, you also increase ghrelin, the hunger hormone. This also encourages something called lipogenesis, meaning that more of the fuels in your diet will be stored as fat than used for energy. In fact, cortisol even breaks down muscle by producing something called myostatin, which signals the body to break down muscle for energy. So it's important for your physique as well that you learn not to feel stressed when it isn't useful. And this is why it's so important that we learn to respond appropriately to the situation at hand and to suppress stress when it isn't appropriate so that we can carry on enjoying life and staying healthy. Mindfulness is the path to that eventuality. But the thing is, there is such a thing as positive stress. The aim here is not to completely remove stress from your life, rather it's just to control it. And as we've already seen, stress is a positive tool if you're trying to enhance your physical performance. If you're in a race or if you're surfing, then this response is exactly what you need in order to get things done. But the ideal situation would be that you get all the benefits of the fight or flight response without the negatives. Now, imagine if you could gain that focus and that increased muscle mass, but without the sense of dread and fear. As it happens, such a state may exist. It's what psychologists call a flow state, and it tends to be triggered during moments when we are highly focused on something that we also actually enjoy. The example given most often is extreme sports, where some athletes describe the world seeming to slow down around them while they pull off amazing moves and feel more alive than they ever have done. We also experience flow when we're completely focused on the work we're doing or when we're so deep in concentration that we forget the time and speak through the night. During this state, we produce similar neurotransmitters and hormones, but with the addition of another one called and adamide. The, now this is the bliss hormone that's also connected to abstract and creative thinking. It's actually the same chemical that gives marijuana its effect, but what most people don't know is that it's also produced naturally by the brain. Again, this isn't just one state, but rather a spectrum. We can be slightly stressed and very stressed. We can be slightly alert or very alert. We can be alert and angry or alert and happy, or alert and scared. It's useful to think of the brain in terms of states, but just be aware that there are countless states in between as well, and it's more likely that you're somewhere on the spectrum. Flow states help us to perform at our best and focus more, but they don't cause the same negative effects as a typical fight or flight. The difference? Well, enjoyment. So if you can try and tap into the enjoyment of what you're doing and see it as a fun challenge rather than something terrible, then you're more likely to get into that flow. Find the fun in what you're doing, find what you're passionate about in it, and learn to actually enjoy it. And you can do all this using very similar strategies to the cognitive restructuring that we've already seen. And likewise, you also need a low level of eustress. Eustress is the equivalent of chronic stress, but it's once again a more positive form. Eustress is the kind of stress that motivates us to do things. For example, if you have an exam coming up and you don't experience any stress at all, then there's a good chance that you're not going to revise for it, and as such, you won't get very good grades. Having just the right amount of low-level stress is what you need to make sure you start revising early and to do the best you can. Eustress doesn't have to mean negative motivation. It can also mean positive motivation. For instance, stressing that you might not achieve the things you really want to achieve. It's stress, but it's based around something positive. 